Dink, dink, dink. Dink, 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 dink. Welcome back to the Jenna and Julian oh, podcast. This is fun. Oh, oh my god. Wow. We Welcome have flashlights. Back. The whole room is dark except for our flashlight faces. I'm Welcome so Welcome back excited. to the Jenna and Julian podcast. The scariest the spookiest edition, ever. edition of all. It is the last episode in October. And the, ah! the lights are out. This episode ah! is brought to you by Me Undies. Undies. You know what's spooky? Having underwear that isn't three times softer than cotton. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Me Undies has new patterns every month of underwear. And now they have lounge pants Whoa. made from the same micromodal fabric as their underwear. Three times softer than cotton. Ooh. <laughs> to get 15% off your first pair and shipping and free shipping, go uh, to me undies. That's M E U N D I E S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Check it out. You will absolutely not be disappointed. Also, guys, the skim is a sponsor this week. Why would you wait to get on Twitter or watch TV to get your news? Do it with the skim. They send you a, a nice, neat, tidy email every single morning. It's a newsletter just for you so you can educate yourself. And it's completely free. Ooh, Ooh. Go to the skim. That's T H E S K I M M dot com slash Jenna Julian. That's two M's. Check it out. Subscribe. It's completely free. Completely free. Uh, and you enter to win a $250 Visa gift card when you do that. Oh. All right. I'm now. scared and excited. Now. All right. So, it's time. first of all, <laughs> look at my face, right? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Why is this so fun? Uh, <laughs> oh I like how you could just disappear. That's my favorite. I know part. that's what I said. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's fun. Okay, so first of all, we have to give a big shout out to Selena Del Toro who left this comment in our last podcast, which is what we asked for. Selena. We wanted to know uh, something that would be scary and fun for you guys for the last week of October, and she suggested. When I read it, I was like, no way. Because this is a book that I used to have and we kept it in my cottage in my dad's house and I would read it and it would scare the absolute shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Like my mm -hmm. brother would not even read it. And okay. when she said it, I was like, I have not heard that name of that book in ages. And it's called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It came out in 1981. So this is something that I read like all of them. Have you read any of these? Oh my God. Okay. I've read zero of them. I read like one sentence when we were looking it up 10 minutes ago, but. You might have like heard some of these stories because they're like. They're pretty considered famous. Considered like American folklore. Okay. You know what I mean? So you read them when you were a kid and yes. you were probably, you were not the first generation of like reading them as a kid. No. Probably they were my, older than that. My brother read them, but he was always like. Your brother's the same generation as you. It's not scary. I'm like, then come read it with me. He's like, no, no, I'm busy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my Rubik's Cube. We didn't, <sighs> we didn't have a lot of toys. <laughs> okay. So we also, Julian, would you like a challenge? Yeah. We are allowed to jump scare one another at any point during this podcast. Successfully or unsuccessfully, stop disappearing. Come back. Ah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's part of the fun. So we can jump scare each other. So this yes. can basically just not even be us reading scary stories it could be one of us the distracting is... the other while they're setting up this elaborate scare prank this is no longer a podcast it's a prank channel welcome it's <laughs> gone scary i'm just a poor boy nobody loves me he's just a poor boy from a poor family spare him his life from this monstrosity he's a cop. Okay, you know, <laughs> Julian what? is in the middle of something. Did I scare you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Are you ready, Julian? Yeah, are you going to start? For scary stories to <laughs> tell in the dark. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I, like, I wanted this to be like an aesthetically fun and scary podcast. Oh, so aesthetic. And you're just like coughing and like sorry. scaring me in general. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Wait, don't disappear. Come back. All right, we get it. It's fun. You're Sorry. Fine. Okay. 
So I I literally have not read these since I was a child. So I don't know if they're going to be scary anymore, but I'm excited. Are you, Julian? I'm excited, yeah. I feel like Should it's I have be... the light on my face while I'm not yeah. reading? Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's going to be... <laughs> I feel like it's going to be easy to scare each other because when you're shining a flashlight under your face, towards your face, it is incredibly difficult to see peripherally. Yeah. Are we going to be blind after this episode? Yes. It's fine. The first story, Julian, of scary stories to tell in the dark is called The Big Toe. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. A boy was digging at the edge of the garden when he saw a big toe. He tried to pick it up, but it was stuck onto something. So he gave it a good hard jerk, and it came off in his hand. Ooh, my God, gross. He got a toe in his hand. Then he heard something groan and scamper away. The boy took the toe into the kitchen and showed it to his mother. It looks nice and plump, she said. Ew, okay, she nasty. I'll put it in the soup, and we'll have it for supper. Okay, that's, that's, what? Hello? Lady. You lost me. I just have to say, this artwork is so nostalgic. Like, it just, it literally brings me back to reading this in the dark. Like, yeah, yeah, in yeah. my room, in my cottage, when I was scared. But Speaking also, of artwork, can I say something? Okay, Julian, go ahead. Speaking of artwork, last episode I promised you I would put pictures of a doll on screen, and I never did. You so never that, did. I'm sorry. Thank you for apologizing. Look up the name of the website to find the pictures of the doll, because I'm not going to put it on this episode either. Goodbye. <laughs> my God. okay sick and also if you wanted to download the pdf file for this story and read along you can do it at harper harper collins right that's where we got this uh yeah it's a pdf file okay anyways yeah. with all of that out of the way that night his father carved the toe into three pieces and they each had a piece then they Wait, did... like a human toe, right? Yes. <gasps> then, Julie, oh my God, that was like, you kicked my chair and it felt so weird and wiggly. Then they did the dishes, and when it got dark, they went to bed. The boy fell asleep almost at once, but in the middle of the night, a sound awakened him. It was something out in the street. It was a voice, and it was calling to him. Where is my toe? It groaned. The boy pulled the blankets over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it'll be gone. Spoken like someone who really just out here eating people's toes. Yeah, they're all way too comfortable with the Where is my toe? It groaned. Then the boy heard footsteps move through the kitchen, into the dining room, into the living room, into the front hall. Then slowly they climbed the stairs. Closer and closer they came. Soon they were up in the upstairs hall. Now they were outside the door. Where is my toe? Damn, okay, I didn't get No, it. you scared me a little bit. Where's my toe? But it was mainly because it was violent and it hurt. <laughs> I'm allowed to be violent just a little bit. Just a little grab, a little touch grab, a little jump scare. The voice groaned. His door opened. Shaking with fear, he listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark towards his bed. They stopped. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. At this point. You got it! <laughs> I got you these. Mm -hmm. It literally says in the story at this point, pause, then jump at the person next to you and shout. Really? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's so fun. Oh, where's my towel? I'm going to get you back. All right. Go for it. Your turn. Oh, you're reading off of my phone? Yeah. Bebe. Okay. This one, this next one's called The Walk. W O K. It's about a guy who makes pad thai every night. Julian, it is not. No, it's called the walk, like normal spelled. W A L K. My uncle was walking down <laughs> a lonely dirt road one day. Okay. He came upon a man who was also walking down that road. Mm-hmm. I'm scared already. The man looked at my uncle, and my uncle looked at the man. The man was scared, and my uncle was scared of that man. But they kept walking. And it began to get dark. The man looked at my uncle. And my uncle looked at the man. The man was very scared of my uncle. (laughs) 
and my uncle was very scared of that man. <laughs> That was it? No. Oh. But they like, kept on walking. What an anticlimactic story. They kept on walking. <laughs> and deep down into the woods they went. It was getting darker. Wait, they're walking together? And the man looked at my uncle. My uncle looked back at the man. What is the story? The man was terribly scared of my uncle. Wait. And my uncle, listen, was terribly <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the whole story. Wait, you get, it's good. like every time you flash your light at me and like you have to use something. all of the resources you have. Okay, like come on. This is uh, we got to be resourceful here. That's so. the story. It's just that. Yeah, it said it said uncle. now scream. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it's just your uncle looking in a mirror. Yeah, they just like had a staring contest. I can't believe a staring contest scared me. Yeah, well, it was it was the delivery, babe. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. I'm doing the next one. Why? Because I wanted to go again. <laughs> That's why. This isn't fair. <gasps> Julian, don't, don't. I don't like that because you're looking <gasps> at like an open window right now. Do not. Do not. And it's nighttime. Stop. Can it. birds be skinwalk? <gasps> Julian. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. What's the safe <laughs> word? Stop it. All right. The safe word pineapple, is pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. No, the safe word is pad thai. Pad thai. Okay. This one's called, What Do You Come For? There was an old woman who lived all by herself, and she was very lonely. Me? Sitting in the kitchen one night, she said, Hmm, I wish I had some company. No sooner had she spoken than down the chimney tumbled two feet from which the flesh had rotted. Okay. The yeah. old woman's eyes bulged with terror. Then two me. legs dropped down the You're chimney as well. Me. Then a body. Wait. Then two arms. Yeah, a body. <laughs> you can't let them touch me. Why can't touch you? That's like you're so scary, Julian. I'm sorry. I'm trying to turn it up. I want to win. There's a big prize involved. You, you grabbed me. Sorry, as the old woman watched. The parts came together into a great gangling man. The man danced around the room faster and faster he went. <laughs> then he stopped and looked dead into her eyes. What do you come for? She asked in a small voice that you shivered and shook. What do I come for? He said. Oh. I come for you. Wow, that's... <laughs> God. As you shout the last words, stamp your feet and jump at someone nearby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, it looks like I had missed my timing a little bit on that one. I'm going to pass this over to you. Kermit, and then you I'm don't want to disappear. Come up here. You don't want to come up here, Kermit, because I'm going to drop you probably. Okay. So you can touch each other. You can lunge at each other. It can be violent. You can even scare someone while you're... That picture. These drawings, though. <laughs> Did you spit at me? Spit cold water. I'm like on one of those rides where it like mists you. Yeah, that was, the, that was, was actually very, the goal. That was very, the goal. Im very immersive. Hey, guys, get out of here. Go, go. Get in your bed. Okay. Back, back to it. All right. This is called Me Tai Doty Walker. I don't understand. Kermit, don't you really either. don't want to come up here, dog. I'm telling Kermit, you. Kermit, go. Get on. There was a haunted house where every night a bloody head fell down the chimney. At least that's what people said. Nobody would stay there overnight. Then a rich man offered $200 to whoever would do it. Wow, there's definitely like a, many YouTubers that would line up to take that challenge, am I right? Mm -hmm. For free. And this boy said he would try if he could have his dog with him. So it was all settled, smart boy. 
The very next night, the boy went to the house with his dog. To make it more cheerful, he started a fire in the fireplace. Then he sat in front of the fire and waited, and his dog waited with him. For a while, nothing happened. But a little after midnight, he heard someone singing softly and sadly off in the woods. The singing sounded something like this. Me Tai Doti Walker. It's just somebody singing, the boy told himself, but he was frightened. Then his dog answered the song. Softly and sadly, it sang, Linchi Kinchi Kali Molly Dingo Dingo. The boy could not believe his ears. His dog had never uttered a word before. Then a few minutes later, he heard the singing again. Now it was closer and louder, but the words were the same. Me, Ty, Doty, Walker. This time, the boy tried to stop his dog from answering. He was afraid that whoever was singing would hear it and come after them. But his dog paid no attention, and again it sang, Lynchy, Kinchy, Collie, Molly, Dingo, Dingo. A half an hour later, and the boy heard the singing again. Now it was in the backyard, and the song was the same. Me, Ty, Doty, Walker. And again, the boy tried to keep his dog quiet, but the dog sang out louder, louder and louder than ever. Lynchy, Kinchy, Collie, Molly, Dingo, Dingo. Soon the boy heard the singing again. Now it was coming down the chimney. Me, Ty, Doty, Walker. And the dog sang right back. Lynchy, Kinchy, Collie, Molly, Dingo, Dingo. Suddenly a bloody head fell out of the chimney. It was missing the fire and landed right next to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> The dog took one look and fell over, dead from fright. The head turned and stared at the boy. Slowly it opened its mouth and... Ah! That's when I was supposed to scare you, but I didn't. God damn, it is scary when you lunge at the other person. Right? Because you can't see because the flashlight's in your face. So it's like ruining your peripheral vision. Gotta have that periphery, you know? Like, what the hell is that story? I, don't I used know. to read that when I was a kid. It's creepy, enough. right? Yeah, it's creepy enough to the like, idea freak of a bloody of head people. rolling down a chimney. Are you kidding me? The idea of body parts falling down the chimney and then forming into a body and then dancing. That's the second story with a, a part of a body coming down a chimney. Okay, this it's one. It's like someone was like, "What do kids like, Santa?" All right, let's mess with that. <laughs> I'm gonna scroll a little bit down just so I can. A lonely pair of pants. What the. What are you doing? You got it. You can't scare me while I'm reading. Okay. There once was a boy alone after school. He had just gotten new pants and they weren't yet comfortable. Me. So he walked and he walked until one big step he heard <laughs> his pants ripped. Because he didn't have micromodal fabric of the MeUndies lounge pants Julian, wait. that you can buy right now Julian. by going to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. Their lounge pants, what's up? Their lounge pants are just as soft as their underwear, just as convenient, but they are, oh my now. God, they're just, they're pants. No. They're wonderful. No. They're wonderful to sleep Honor. in. They're wonderful. They're wonderful to watch TV in. They're wonderful no. to game in. They're wonderful to podcast in and scare your partner in. Seriously, the lounge pants are perfect for this time of year when it starts to get a little cool. You want to be by the fire, but the underwear is just not going to cut it. Okay. So once you get your me undies, get your me undies lounge no. pants. They're here. They're like so soft. You won't even believe how soft they are when you touch them. Also, guys, if you want all of the stuff that me undies offers, the fun prints on their underwear, the socks, the bralettes, the lounge pants, and you want it for a better price than anybody else, then you can get yourself a me undies membership. With their 100% satisfaction guarantee, if for some reason, which it won't happen, but if it does, you don't like any of their undies, they'll do whatever they can to get you the right pair. And if they can't, they'll refund you. They're a great company. They've been supporting the podcast for a long time, and it is spooky to think about not having me undies. So right now, if you look in your undies drawer, just imagine seeing the most comfortable undies in the world, also the most good looking ones. So just go to MeUndies.com slash Jenna Julian. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Get 15% off your first pair of lounge pants. And grab yourself some awesome MeUndies while you're there. And consider sub subscribing to be a member because you get great prices and it is worth it. Check it out. It is a no-brainer. Click the link below or go to that URL. Julie. Thank you. MeUndies, what's up? Oh, 
What is it? <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to shine on me. Miss Weech. There she go. There she go. One thing that's honestly pretty scary is not being informed in today's day and age. Oh. The skim helps prevent that. When you wake up in the morning, the skim's waiting for you in your email inbox. It is a nice, beautifully organized newsletter about all the news for you that happened in the world that you need to know about to be a functioning member of society, okay? You can't not know what's going on in the world and thrive. Whoa, you're getting really close. You're getting really close. <clears throat> Aw, I tried to grab your leg and scare you. Well, you did grab my leg, but I did the burp defense. <laughs> Guys, the skim is a really easy newsletter to read. There's no nonsense. There's no jumbled opinions. There's no commercials. It is just the skim. Uh, it is... Keeps you up to date on literally everything you need to know. With voting, with everything in politics, with sports, with world news, good or bad, you need to be in the know. The Skim helps you do that. So go to T H E S K I M M, the Skim.com slash Jenna Julian and subscribe. It's completely free. Okay. Just try it. If you don't like it, that's fine, but you got to try it because I think you will. Also, guys, Permit. a lot of the podcast sponsors that we have are products, right? Like you have to pay money which is great because you're getting a good product, but this skim is completely free, okay? So it requires none of your money. So check it out. Go to the URL below, theskim.com slash Jenna Julian, and subscribe to the newsletter. See how you like it. And also, you're entered to win a $250 Visa gift card, and that's real money that could be in your pocket just from subscribing. So check it out. Thank you to our sponsors. And moving on. This one is called He Heard Footsteps Coming Up the Cellar Stairs. (gasps) Oh. Ooh, this picture's creepy. They're all creepy pictures. Ted Martin and Sam Miller were good friends. They spent a lot of time together. On this particular night, they were sitting on a fence near the post office, talking about one thing and another. There There was a field of turnips across the road. Suddenly they saw something crawl out of the field and stand uh uh-uh. no it looked like a man no but in the dark it was hard to tell for sure Mm-mm. then it was gone <gasps> oh don't grab me <laughs> <clears throat> but soon it appeared again it walked halfway across the road Mm-mm. then it turned around Mm-mm. and went back into the field Then it came out a third time and slowly started walking towards them. Mm -mm. By now, Ted and Sam were scared. I forgot you had headphones on. I was trying to snap in your ear. That did not work. Um, uh, It walked halfway. Okay. By now, Ted and Sam were scared. I'm scared. And they started running. But when they finally stopped, they decided they were being foolish. They weren't sure what they had seen or scared them. So they decided to go back, get a better look. Pretty soon they saw it. For it was coming to meet them. Mm. It was wearing black pants, a white shirt, and black suspenders. Whoa. Sam said, I'm going to try and touch it. Why? Then we'll know if it's real. He walked up to it. Don't. Peered in its face. Don't do that. It had bright, penetrating eyes, sunk deep in its head. Skinwalker? Looked like a skeleton. Ted looked at one and screamed. And again, he and Sam ran, but this time the skeleton followed them. They got to Ted's house. They stood in the doorway and watched it. It stayed out in the road for a while. Then it disappeared. A year later, Ted got sick and died. Toward the end, Sam sat up with him every night. The night Ted died, Sam said, he looked just like the skeleton. The the, the end. (laughs) That was the whole story. So maybe it was him the whole time, or it was just a really mean thing to say to your dying friend. Or the skeleton went into him when he touched him. Yeah, the skeleton probably killed him. Yeah, like how they just glaze over that he died. Yeah, a year later he died. <laughs> oh, sick. All right, well, um, the end. Your turn. Cold as clay. 
this story. Tulian is called Cold as Clay. Clay, 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 clay. A farmer had a daughter for whom he cared more than anything on earth. She fell in love with a farm ham named Jim. But the farmer did not think that Jim was good enough for his daughter. To keep them apart, he sent her to live with her uncle on the other side of the country. The end. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Soon after she left, Jim got sick and he wasted away and died. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, God. Did he die? <laughs> he died. Is that, is that What's with these stories and just saying, and he died? <laughs> and he died. Oh, sick. Can I make up a story? Yeah, if you want. No, I don't want Not to. Not right now, though. I'm in the middle of a okay, story. Okay, I thought him dying but was the end of the story. But thank you for Aries. I thought, all I thought him all dying was the, the end of the story. Pardon me. Yeah, Julian, him dying is the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> like the laziest, scary storybook you've ever read. And then he died. Yeah, and then he died. <laughs> That's just the end of every story. Soon after he left, or after she left, Jim got sick. And he wasted away and died. Everyone said he died of a broken heart. The farmer felt so guilty about Jim's death. He could not tell his daughter what had happened. She continued to think about Jim and the life they might have had together. One night, many weeks later. What the? Why are you laughing? Julian. Okay. Yes, that's very funny. Boom! Ah! <laughs> One night, many weeks later, okay, sorry. there was a knock <gasps> on her uncle's door. Don't piss off the dogs. When the girl opened the door, Jim was standing there. Your father asked me to get you, he said. I came on his best horse. Is there anything wrong, she asked. I don't know, he said. She packed a few things, and they left. She rode behind him, clinging onto his waist. Soon he complained of a headache. It aches something terrible, he told her. She put her hand on his forehead. Why are you cold as clay, she said. I hope you are not ill. And she wrapped her handkerchief around his head. They traveled so swiftly that in a few hours they reached the farm. The girl quickly dismounted and looked, knocked on the door. Her father was startled to see her. Didn't you send it for me? She asked. No, I didn't, he said. She turned to Jim, but he was gone, and so was the horse. They went to the stable to look for them. The horse was there. It was covered with sweat and trembling with fear. Oh, shit. But there was no sign of Jim. Terrified, her father told her the truth about Jim's death. Then quickly, he went to see Jim's parents. They decided to open his grave. The corpse was in its coffin, but around its head, they found the girl's handkerchief. Oh, oh my God. It was their handkerchief. Oh, my God. Around his head. <gasps> Damn it. I thought that was going to scare Why me. did you put your phone right there to set an alarm to try and scare me? Yeah. Beach, you can't scare me. Oh, okay. Oh, my Challenge God. I'm accepted. kidding. I, I've already gotten scared like 12 times. I accidentally snoozed it. I got to turn it off. Give me 10 minutes. That is so scary. I used to read a story when I was little about like a girl that had a, used to wear a choker. And yeah. then one time some guy untied it and her whole head fell off. <gasps> and I wear chokers all the time. Beach, if you take it off, my head going to fall off. Damn. You know what I'm saying, Beach? Okay. This one's called. What was the name of the last one you read? Cold as Clay. Okay, this one's called The White Wolf. Oh my god. Okay. Shine that at your face. The timber wolves around French Creek had gotten out of hand. <gasps> there were so many wolves, the <gasps> farmers could not stop them from killing their cattle and sheep. So the state put a bounty on them. It would pay a hunter $10 for every wolf pelt he turned in. A butcher in town named Bill Williams thought, Williams. That was, thought that was pretty good money. So he stopped working, working as a butcher and started killing wolves. He was good at it. Every year, he killed over 500 of them. That came to more than $5,000. It was quite a bit of money in those days. After four or five years, Bill had killed so many wolves that there were hardly any left in that area. So he retired, and he vowed to never harm another wolf because wolves had made him rich. 
Then one day a farmer reported that a white wolf had killed two of his sheep. He shot at it and hit it, but the bullets didn't have any effect. Soon, that wolf was seen all over the countryside, (gasps) killing and running. Killing what? Nobody could stop it. Cattle and sheep. One night, the white wolf came into Bill's yard and killed his pet cow. (gasps) No! Bill forgot about his decision to never harm another wolf. He went into town the next morning, bought a young lamb for bait, took it out to the hills, and tied it to a tree. Then he backed off about 50 yards and sat down underneath a tree with his gun in his lap. He waited. He killed so many wolves, though. It's hard to... When Bill didn't come back, his friends started looking for him. Julian, Julian, okay, you know... Finally, they found the lamb. It was still tied to a tree. It was hungry, but it was alive. Then they found Bill. He was still sitting against the other tree, but he was dead. His throat has been torn open, and there was no sign of a struggle. His gun hadn't been fired. There were no tracks in the soil around him. As for the white wolf, it was never seen again. (laughs) Stop. What? Stop just like banging the table. It makes me feel like there's like an earthquake or something. Like actually scary. Not just you clomping around. That's how an Aries scares. Scary season. Scary season, beach. Did you like it? Yeah, it was a good story. I'm scared though. What do you think the white wolf was doing? It killed him. But how? How did the white wolf just slit a man's throat? I don't know. He used his wolf hands. He might be a skinwalker. Skinwalker. Ah, don't touch me like that on my arm (sighs) when you say skinwalker. No. This story is called The Haunted House. One time a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. I don't know what that means, but I think it's like settle a a ghost thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A haunt to rest, yep. The house had been haunted for about 10 years. Several people had tried to stay there all night, but they would always get scared out by the haunt. So this preacher took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, built himself a good fire and lit a lamp, sat there reading the Bible. Ooh. Ooh. Weird flex, but I'm all right. (laughs) (laughs) Then, just before midnight, he heard something start up the cellar, walking back and forth, back and forth. forth. It sounded like somebody trying to scream and got choked off. (laughs) Yeah, like that. Then there was a lot of thrashing around and struggling, and finally everything got quiet. (gasps) The old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the door knob no! turn. I was looking at myself in the monitor. <laughs> okay. He saw the door knob turn. And when the door began to open, he jumped up and hollered, what do you want? The door shut back easy like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went back to mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking again. Step, step, step up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob turn and the door open. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, who are you? What do you want? There's this dope drawing. Oh, fuck, she's scary. To the haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do. Then she just faded out. The old preacher waited, waited. And when he didn't hear any more noises, he went over and shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over. But he was a brave man and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch and sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he heard the haunt haunt start up again. Step, step, step. Closer and closer, step, step, step. It was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. Then the knob slowly turned and the door opened wide. This time the preacher spoke quiet like he said, In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, who are you and what do you want? The haunt came right across the room. 
straight to him and took hold of his coat. It was a young woman about 20 years old. Her hair was torn and tangled. The flesh was dropping off of her face so he could see the bones and parts of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was a sort of blue light way back in her eye sockets. He had no nose. She had no nose on her face. Then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing. She she told how her lover had killed her for money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the joint end joint of the little finger from her left hand and lay it in the collection plate at the next church meeting, and he'd find out who had murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight, and I'll tell you where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down to the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bone in the collection plate, and when a certain man happened to touch it, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed and scraped and tore at the bone, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him on to jail. After the man was hung, jeez, I guess that was the punishment. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to that house one midnight, and the haunt's voice told him to dig under the hearth rock. He did that, and he found a big sack of money, and where that haunt had held onto his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth, and it never did come out. Oh my god, that picture was very scary. <laughs> that picture was very scary. <laughs> That was really scary. I would, if I was a kid and I saw that picture while listening to the story, dude, I'd be up. Audi, dude. I'd be Audi. By the way, we're gonna link where you can find this book below because we're like totally it's using fun. it for our content. It's fun. It is fun. Um, Your turn. Read me a story, Peach. What do you think the? Hold on. What do you think the? Blue, read me a story. What do you think the blue light? Can we stop the scaring thing? No, I like it. It's fun. What do you think the blue light was behind her eyes? I don't know. Her soul. Why? It just seems like an odd detail to include. I'm ready to get scared, bitch. Scare me. Oh, this one's called. Yeah. 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 That's not yeah. the name of it. Yeah. It's, it's called The Guests. Ooh. A young man and his wife were on a trip to visit his mother. Usually they arrived in time for supper, but they had gotten a a little bit late start. And now it was getting dark. So they decided to look for a place to stay overnight and just go on in the morning. Just off the road, they saw a small house in the woods. Maybe they rent rooms, the wife said. So they stopped to ask. An elderly man and woman came to the door. They didn't rent rooms, they said. But they would be glad to have a stay overnight as guests. They had plenty of room, and they would enjoy their company. The old woman made coffee and brought out some cake, and the four of them talked for a while. Then the young couple were taken to their room. They again explained that they wanted to pay for this, but the old man said he would not accept any money. The young couple got up early the next morning before their hosts had awakened. On a table near the front door, they left an envelope with some money in it for the room, and they went on to the next town. They stopped in a restaurant and had breakfast. Mm -mm. When they told the owner where they had stayed, he was shocked. That can't be, he said. That house burned to the ground. Mm. And the man and woman who lived there died in the fire. Mm. The young couple could not believe it. So they went back to the house. Only now, there was no house. All they found was a burned out shell. My God. They stood staring at the ruins, trying to understand what had happened. Then the woman screamed. In the rubble was a badly burned table, like the one they had seen by the front door. On the table was the envelope that they had left that morning. My God. That was a good story. That's scary. That was a short one. I'll read another one. I'm scared. The girl who stood on a grave... 
Some boys and girls were at a party one night. There was a graveyard down the street, and they were talking about how scary it was. Don't ever stand on a grave after dark, one of the boys said. The person inside will grab you. He'll pull you under. That's not true, one of the girls said. It's just a superstition. I'll give you a dollar if you stand on a grave, said the boy. A grave doesn't scare me, said the girl. I'll do it right now. The boy handed her his knife. Stick this knife in one of the graves, he said. Bitch, then we'll know. Those are some bad friends. You Get were you there. Some new friends, the girl. graveyard was filled with shadows and was quiet as death. Why did you just push me? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to get creative. It's hard <laughs> to scare you. We're just sitting next to each other. There's nothing to be scared of, the girl told herself, but she was she was scared. She picked out a grave and stood on it, then quickly bent over. And plunged the knife into the soil. And she started to leave. But she couldn't get away. Something was holding her back. She tried a second time to leave, but couldn't move. She was filled with terror. Something has got me, she screamed as she fell to the ground. When she didn't come back, the others went to look for her, and they found her body sprawled across the grave. Okay. You Without know. realizing it, she had plunged the knife into her in through her skirt that she had pinned to the ground, only it was the knife that held her. She had died of fright. Oh, damn. So she like pinned herself to the grave and just died of getting scared? Jeez. I thought that was going to be like, that was like, the the amount of like realism to that one was scary. You know? Because it was like, she just like freaked herself the fuck out and stabbed her dress oh into the ground and then God. like literally scared herself to death. Oh my God. What do you think of that one? Who are you in that situation? Because I'm definitely, definitely I'm not the boy. that girl. I'm the boy being like, don't do that. All right. I'm trying to look for ones that like look familiar to me. The hook, I know, scared me a lot when I was little. Yeah. Donald and Sarah went to the movies. They went for a ride in Donald's car. Ooh, the ends. They go on a date. Ah, oh, they kiss. They hang out. Okay. <laughs> they parked up on a hill at the edge of town. From there, they could see the lights up and down the alley. Donald turned on the radio and found some music, but an announcer broke in with some news bulletins. A murderer had escaped from the state prison. He was armed with a knife and was headed south on foot. He, his left hand was missing. In its place, he wore a hook. Let's roll up the windows and lock the door, said Sarah. That's a good idea, said Donald. That prison isn't too far away, said Sarah. Maybe we really should go home. But it's only 10 o'clock, said Donald. I don't care what time it is, she said. I want to go home. Sarah clearly is a Virgo. I'm kidding. That's not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sarah, said Donald. He's not going to climb all the way up here. Why would he do that? Even if he did, all the doors are locked. How could he get in? Donald, he could take that hook and break through a window and open a door, she said. I'm scared, and I want to go home. Donald was annoyed. Girls are always afraid of something, he said. Donald's a jerk. <laughs> kidding. As he started the car. Sarah thought she heard something or someone scratching at her door. Did you hear that? She said as they roared away. It sounded like somebody was trying to get in. Oh, sure, said Donald. Soon they got to her house. Would you like to come in and have some cocoa? She asked. No, he said. I've got to go home. He went around to the other side of the car to let her out. Hanging on the door handle was a hook. The end. It scared me a lot when I was little because you know what? <laughs> That's a realistic ass story and I'm scared. Yeah. Can you not understand why a little girl would be I scared of that? I can understand why a child would be scared of that for sure. Like some of them I'm like, okay, that's a little ridiculous. Like somebody's head falling down. Like, yeah, that's really scary. But that one was like real and it like genuinely scared me. That's why I remembered it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the realer ones, not the ones where someone just turns into a skeleton and they're dead. Like it's the ones where it like could happen to you. Mm -hmm. You could go stand on a grave and accidentally stab your dress into the ground and then die overnight of fright. That's a thing. That could happen. Mm -hmm. So it's scary. Okay. Do you want to talk more about the hook? No. You okay? Yeah. Still scares me. Someone Do you want to hear something funny? What? When I was a kid, I watched a scary movie. Yeah. 
and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it was making fun of the scary movies, but and it's I still scary. Well, because I hadn't like some jumps. And well, yeah, because and I because I, I hadn't seen most of the movies it was making fun of. Oh, I so see. I was just I hadn't seen like the you know Scream or whatever. So, um, may I carry your basket? Oh, can I squeeze? Your, sorry, Sam Lewis. Spent the evening playing chess at his friend's house. It was about midnight when they finished their game. He started home. Mm, what a rollicking night of chess. Outside it was icy, cold, and quiet as the grave. Oh, he playing footsie with me. Boy, I ain't scared of your feet. <laughs> like that uh, guy who played footsie with the woman who didn't want to play footsie, so they had to land his flight. Mm. Damn, dude. That guy's the problem. He is a problem. <laughs> As he came around a turn in the road, he was surprised to see a woman walking ahead of him. She was carrying a basket covered with a white cloth. When he caught up to her, he looked to see who it was. But she was so bundled up against the cold, it was hard to see her face. Good evening, Sam said. What brings you out so late? She didn't answer. None of your fucking business. Then he said, may I carry your basket? She handed it to him. From under the cloth, a small voice said, that's very nice of you. Oh, shit. <laughs> and that was followed by wild laughter. Do it. Finish my story, please. I'm erotic. I buy you screaming my name. All right. Bam, 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 bam. Something, something. All of the times. All you people, can't you see? Can't you see? All right. Keep going. Oh, oh. You grabbed my calf and it was really scary. Don't, ah, ah, ah. My, turn. my story. Okay. Sorry, it was just too perfect. Anyway, she goes, ha 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 ha. <laughs> and it was. Uh, it was the larger than life JC Chazé laugh. That's not JC Chazé. That is AJ from AJ Backstreet Boys. From Boys. Um, Sam was so startled that he dropped the basket. <laughs> he was not expecting <laughs> yeah. to hear that. Out rolled a woman's head. He looked at the head and he stared at the woman. <laughs> It was her head. Oh. Oh, he cried Julian and he started to run. And, and the woman in her head began oh. to chase him. Oh. Soon the head caught up to him. How is the head running? Okay. It bounded into the air and sunk its teeth into his left leg. <gasps> <sighs> grabbed, his by, grabbed him by the teeth. Sam screamed with pain and ran faster, but the woman and her head stayed right behind. Soon the head leaped into the air again and bit into his other leg. Yo. Then they were gone. Okay, you know what? Mm. 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 The head comes back. Wait, are you just making falls sure down I the can chimney? See when you flash your flashlight in my eyes and this one, that's too many flashlights. He goes to tend to his fire. Wait, what? When he grabs a piece of wood and puts it in the fire, Wait, it, what? it was her head. He wakes up. This whole thing was a dream. <laughs> He realizes. Is this a Julian he realizes. Edition he to realizes the story? that he shouldn't have skipped BAM practice. Shouldn't. And he did. Shouldn't. Have. And he knows that next practice tomorrow, when he goes into school, he's going to be ridiculed for skipping BAM practice because it's very close to the homecoming game. What are you doing? Flash it on your face. Can't see you. It's very close to the homecoming game, and he's not going to be prepared. A couple of days later, Friday rolls around. He's unprepared. It's been, it's the, it's the opening game, homecoming, and he's expected to be the lead in the band. He shows up, walks out onto the field in, in the march. Dum, 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 dum. He's doing fine because it's just walking in formation. That's the easiest part. He gets out into the center of the field, looks out into the crowd and only sees one person in the audience. It was the woman with no head. <laughs> he says, what are you doing here? <laughs> he runs away. 
He trips and falls, slams his head on the pavement, wakes up in a hospital. In the hospital, there's a TV on. The basketball game's playing. He looks, his fourth quarter, two seconds left, a three-pointer shot. The three-pointer goes up. It's not a basketball. It's the woman's head. Oh. It drains through the three-pointer. Yeah, no. The Celtics win. <laughs> Except no one's asking questions why they're playing a basketball game with someone's head. He rolls out of bed. He was faking the whole time. He's not even sick. All the nurses start attacking him. He jumps through the window, barrel rolls onto the floor, stands up and says, nothing because he gets attacked by the head again. It falls from the sky. It won't stop chasing him. Then the head grows wings like the little thing they play Quidditch with. It's just got wings. It's chasing him around. He does three backflips. All of a sudden, he's just as scared as he was, but there was there was an Olympic recruiter right there and saw him do the three backflips and said, hey, kid, you did some crazy backflips. Will you come be on our team and compete at the Olympics? He turns around. He says to the head, do I have your permission to leave this story now and go be in the Olympics? And she says, yes. And then he goes off to the Olympics and the head, the head was his mom. He, the head was his mom and packed him a lunch with her teeth. Julian, what the hell? The end. Damn, that was a good story, B. Sorry, I feel like I had I wow. had to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of flair. You know what I mean? Because we're not six. Sometimes these mm-hmm. stories fall a little flat. It's okay though, because we're getting like in the spirit. Them. No, no, no. Nostalgic. I know, I know. They're nostalgic, but you know what's what? What? What's what? What's what? What? Don't start a sentence and not finish it. I didn't it. start any sentence. <gasps> oh God, that's your foot. That's your foot. Are you scared or what? I'm scared. Wait, so this is... Okay, so this episode concludes... It will be the last episode of October. January meaning it will be based. it will be the Halloween episode. Yay. The f- grand finale. Grand finale. That is if we made it this far. <laughs> what? I'm scared. <laughs> that mm. noise is scary. Every single, like we were in, when we were in Colorado, every single thing that we saw in the middle of the night, we just pretended was possessed and just made that noise. It's terrifying. <laughs> I hate that. I would have asked you to stop like a thousand times. Yeah. And that would have done nothing for Colin because he would have kept doing it. scares me. You walk up to the cabin. It's dark. You open the front door. Oh boy. Here we go. And there's Garfield, a really cute cat. And mm-hmm. you say, hi Garfield. And Garfield looks up at you and goes. Hi, welcome to my cabin. Hi, welcome to Chili's. Hi, welcome to Chili's. <laughs> We're rolling out to find this country's greatest diners, drive-ins, and dives. Wait, stop! I'm putting this away. <laughs> stop. <laughs> That's a scary so story. Much. You reach for your phone, and there's just an invisible hand <laughs> pushing it away. You can't touch it. That's terrifying, dude. Uh, so, what was your favorite story? I don't know. They're all so scary. I'm scared. Mine was the one where they stay at the motel or the little bed and breakfast, but that doesn't exist. That's like a scary concept to me. That's pretty scary. Pretty fucking scary. I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah. What if we looked out front and there was two men standing? <gasps> sorry. Don't. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My house got broken into when I was a little girl. Yeah, that's... that's my bedroom that's window. No I hate yeah, that. Yeah, that's no joke. Scary. One of them was a skeleton. Julian. The other one ah. was just a head. It was the woman's head from this ah. story. Sorry. Enough with the heads, <laughs> Julian. I didn't start it. I just finished it. All right. I hope you guys are good and scared. This was fun. Julian, you definitely got scared a couple times. I got you a couple times, but I think that you won in the scaring. Why? Because I was more violent with touching the table yeah. and making noises? Yeah, you got me a couple times for sure. Well, this was fun. It was festive and spooky and fun. And nostalgic at the same time. But not for you because you, you hadn't read these yet. But No, I have. but I remember being scared as a kid, so it's nostalgic in that way. True. Um. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween. We're going to scare the shit out of every kid we no. see. Just kidding, we're not. We're going to give out candy, and I hope you guys have um, a great time. Be safe. Yeah. If you're going to Halloween parties, please 
use Lyft or don't drive or walk or plan uh, because sure. it is a crazy night out there. And but, there's um, lots of little kids. Lots of little kids out there. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful, festive, exciting Halloween. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of the Jenna Julian Podcast. This time with the lights on. Oh. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all.